Hi, I'm Adra. I'm an occupational therapist and movement instructor. In this video, I'm going to go over different bony landmarks of our pelvis and help you find them on your body and then briefly discuss the pelvic floor. So here I have a model pelvis. Now, if it were to sit on my body, it would go this way. So it would have to go back a couple of inches, right? Maybe eight inches to be there on my body, but that's where the pelvis sits approximately. And we'll find a few of these landmarks briefly, and then I'll help you find them on your body. So let's start with our pubic bone. So our pubic bones are here and our pubic symphysis is right here. So that's in the front of the body. Um, and then we can go down to our sits bones or ischial tuberosities, and that's where you sit. So if I flip this as if the person were laying down and their legs are moving towards you, these are our ischial tuberosities. And then we have our coccyx or our tailbone, and that's this part. So it's at the bottom of the sacrum. So here's your sacrum. You go down, it's at the bottom. That's your coccyx or your tailbone. All right, so let's start with finding those four spots on our bodies. So the pubic bone is at the front. And so you can push your hands into the front of your pelvis. Um, and this is the area generally where there's hair, if you wanna think about it that way, where the hair begins and maybe an inch down from where the hair begins. That's your pubic bone. The model has a very short pubic bone and a, a lot of people have a much wider, longer pubic bone. So just recognize that uh, you might be able to feel it still quite down low. So that's your pubic bone. And then your ischial tuberosities, usually the easiest way to find this is sitting. So you would just sit, put your hands under your bum and sort of rock a little side to side. The other way I like to find it is to put the hands at the gluteal fold. So that being where your butt cheek meets your thigh. So it's where it just starts to go in and put the fingers inward, right? So we're cupping our butt and then start to squat and you'll start to feel some bones move. And then from there, I like to move up maybe an inch. So I'm not right on the gluteal fold, I'm maybe up an inch and then I'll feel those sits bones pushing into my hands and then coming back in. If you're having a hard time finding them, think about moving maybe more inward or more medial the sits bones are really close together. I mean, that's super close, but they're closer together than most people think. So they're not out wide where our outer hips are, right? If you think about these are part of your outer hips, they're inward, they're more medial than the outer hips. And then finding the tailbone, you're just gonna put your hand right between your butt cheeks. Go high, start high. So think about your butt crack, you're gonna go high right where the butt crack starts and then maybe play with going down an inch or two or up an inch or two. And then for me, that's about where it is. So my middle finger is sort of pushing inward and I can feel my coccyx. And of course, to find these landmarks, depending on your body, you may have to push in a little bit harder to get through the tissue to find these spots. And so what's helpful to think about here is this area that we've just discussed, so our uh, pubic bone, our sits bones, or ischial tuberosities, and our tailbone or our coccyx, is the space that looks sort of like a diamond, right? So the diamond would be here for standing for me, but then if I'm laying on my back, my legs are going towards the camera or towards you, Right, we've got our, our diamond shape, or sometimes we think about it as two triangles. And this space is where your pelvic floor muscles connect. So it's one of the areas where there's a lot of pelvic floor connection. And so that's where the pelvic floor muscles live and they connect throughout. And what do they do? They help support your internal organs, for one. And so here we have our pelvis, right? And our internal organs sit in our pelvis. So for most people, you have your bladder here in the front. So the bladder kind of sits in the front and the rectum sits in the back. And then people who have uteruses, 
it's in the middle. So again, the bladder's in the front, the rectum's in the back, and if you have a uterus, it's going to be in the middle. And they sit there, and they're held by these pelvic floor muscles, which is wild. We have these three layers of muscles, and one of the goals here of these muscles is to keep your internal organs in. And then the other goal is to help keep things in. And now by keep things in, I'm talking about keeping your poo in, keeping your pee in. You know, you can't get to the bathroom for another five minutes for whatever reason. These muscles help contract to hold your urine in or hold your feces in. Then the other thing it does is it helps release. It helps you go to the bathroom, relax. Um, and then, of course, our pelvic floor muscles are involved in sexual function. So being able to release and um, open up or harden to have some form of sex. And also um, for women or for people who have uh, uteruses, giving birth, being able to open up so that you can have birth and then of course repairing itself to regain um, all of these amazing functions. So the pelvic floor is so vital. In, in helping our everyday function. It helps you every single day, keeping your internal organs in, keeping your urine in when you're jumping, when you're running, and then helping you release whatever it is that you need to release. The one other thing I wanna go over um, in this video is uh, finding a neutral pelvis. So we talk about all this pelvis and why is it important to find a neutral pelvis? Because that's how the muscles are gonna function most optimally. And having good posture, believe it or not, helps your pelvic floor. So the next bony landmark I want us to find in the last, or maybe not the last, but probably <laughs> the next one at least, is your ASIS or your anterior superior iliac spine. So I'll come a little closer. So here we have our, our iliac crest, which is the sides of the hips. So if you put your hands kind of not on your waist, but on your hips, you'll feel that bone. Your ASIS is right here in the front. So it's outermost and front. So depending on the width of your hips, it might be, or just the, your anatomy, it might be further in or further out. So here where my fingers are is where my ASIS is. But just recognize that everyone's a little different. It might be further in for some or further out for others. And what you can do is place the palms of your hands, your lower palms, on your ASISs. So you might have to push in again. And then you're going to find your fingers on your pubic bone. So finding neutral. I'm going to go kind of at a diagonal so that you can see. So here I'm, I'm pretty close to neutral. So what neutral is in general is when we think about having the fingers where your pubic bone is and your palms where your ASISs are in a kind of the same plane, in the same plane. And so a posterior tilt is when you're tucked under, and I'll maybe go sideways. So here's our neutral, right? And posterior is you're sort of tucked under so that now my fingers are further ahead of my palms. And that's not what we want. So that creates a lot of tension in the back and, um, stretchiness in the front for our pelvic floor muscles and just sitting in this position is just not where we want to be. And then you could go anterior tilt, right? So now that's when the palms or the heels of the hands are way ahead of the fingers. This is like sticking your butt way out. And so that creates the opposite. It creates a lot more tension in those pelvic floor muscles in the front and then some stretch in the back. And so what we want to find is that neutral position. And of course, everyone's a little different, so it might not be in that exact perfect, you know, pubic bone and ASIs are in the exact same plane, but it's in that general vicinity. And so you can play around with that, kind of tucking your pelvis, sticking your butt out, and finding that position where it's nice and even. And seeing if you can move through, you know, your day in that position and noticing if you have that tendency to tuck or stick your butt out. And that's it for this video. And go ahead and wait for some more videos on adding movement while being aware of your pelvic floor.